Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Yeshi Chonzom. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Thursday, the 10th of December. India's Agriculture Minister says government ready to give written assurance on minimum support price to farmers. Pakistan Prime Minister Imran Khan dares opposition PDM on no trust motion against him. And NATO urges parties to the peace process in Afghanistan to form political settlement. And now for all the details. The ongoing farmers' protest entered its 15th day on Thursday, a day after farmers rejected Indian government's final proposal of amendments to the three farm laws and announced a bigger movement. Addressing a press conference on Thursday, India's Agriculture Minister Narendra Singh Thomas said the government is ready to provide a written assurance to the farmers' union that the minimum supporting prices system of procurement, which safeguards the farmers to a minimum profit for the harvest, will not be affected and shall continue. A day after India's farmers rejected the government's proposal to amend three controversial laws, Agriculture Minister Narendra Singh Tomar on Thursday said the government is open to amending some provisions in the new farm laws. Tomar said that the government is ready to provide a written assurance to the farmers' union that the minimum supporting prices or MSP system of procurement will not be affected and shall continue. Farmers have been demonstrating since late last month over the reforms enacted in September that loosened rules around the sale, pricing and storage of farm produce, which had protected farmers from an unfettered free market for decades. And Meanwhile, as farmers' protest in and around Indian capital New Delhi against the farm laws entered 15th day, farmer leaders on Thursday said they would intensify nationwide protests that would include blocking of national highways and railway tracks. Vietnam hosted the 7th ASEAN Defence Minister's meeting plus via video conferencing on Thursday. Sharing platform with his Chinese counterpart, India's Defence Minister Rajnath Singh in a veiled reference to China called on members of the Association of Southeast Asian Nations and its dialogue partners to exercise self-restraint and avoid actions that complicate the situation. India's Defence Minister Rajnath Singh on Thursday called on members of the Association of Southeast Asian Nations ASEAN and its dialogue partners to exercise self-restraint and avoid actions that complicate the situation in a thinly veiled reference to China. Singh's remarks made during a virtual gathering of the ASEAN Defence Minister's Meeting Plus, ADMM Plus came against the backdrop of India-China standoff in Ladakh sector of the line of actual control. Singh pointed out that threats to the rules-based order, maritime security, cyber-related crimes and terrorism remain the challenges that we need to address as a forum. As we enhance mutual trust and confidence, exercising self-restraint in the conduct of activities and abiding actions that may further complicate the situation will go a long way in bringing sustained peace to the region. The ADMM Plus is a platform for ASEAN and its eight dialogue partners to strengthen security and defence cooperation for peace, stability and development in the region. In news from Pakistan, Prime Minister Imran Khan on Wednesday said the constitution stipulated a no-confidence motion for the removal of the government and dared the opposition to do so. Meanwhile, the Pakistan Democratic Movement said opposition's next public meeting in Lahore on December 13 will be held at any cost. 
Pakistan Prime Minister Imran Khan has challenged the opposition to bring a no confidence motion against him in parliament stating that is the constitutional way to send a government packing. He made the statement in a conversation with reporters in Sial court after he inaugurated an airline Air Sial on Wednesday as opposition alliance the Pakistan Democratic Movement continued to brandish its threat of resigning from assemblies. Earlier Khan criticized the opposition's forging ahead with plans for the upcoming Lahore rally. He said those who call for complete lockdowns in the first coronavirus wave were going around and holding public rallies themselves. Meanwhile, Chief of Jamaat Ulema Islam Fazl and Pakistan Democratic Movement Maulana Fazlur Rahman said opposition's next public meeting in Lahore on December 13 will be held at any cost even if Punjab government turns the Minare Pakistan venue into a dam. Because we have decided that the meeting will inshallah be done and the people will come to that meeting and on the other side of Lahore will be the centre of the people. और 13 दिसंबर लाहौर का एक बहुत ही तारीखी दिन होगा। The Pakistan Democratic Movement and 11 Party Alliance of Opposition Parties had earlier announced that the lawmakers will resign en masse by the end of this month from Parliament to paralyse the government and force Khan to call early snap polls. More news from Pakistan. Scores of restaurant owners and workers recently held a protest in Pakistan's Karachi city, urging authorities to stop imposing heavy fines and harassing them with ceiling drives amid the coronavirus lockdown. They said they were already facing huge losses due to strict coronavirus-related standard operating procedures. All Pakistan Restaurant Association or APRA recently held a protest in Pakistan's Karachi city, urging authorities to stop imposing heavy fines and harassing them with ceiling drives. Despite following coronavirus-related standard operating procedures or SOPs, the protesters demanded that the mindless crackdown against restaurants in the city should come to an end and there should be relaxation in SOPs due to which they are facing huge losses and people associated with the industry are staring at an uncertain future. The lockdown is like this, that we have to close at 8 o'clock and after that there is a take away problem. So they have to give time and they have to keep the option of opening the door. Because many restaurants are in the middle of the bed. So the time is at 12 o'clock and the time is at 12 o'clock and the time is at 12 o'clock so that the people who are with it इसके साथ व्यवस्था है उनकी रोजी रोटी का इंतजाम और बेरोजगारी से बचे यहाँ हमने देखा कि जितने भी रेस्टोरेंट्स हैं वहाँ एसओपीज़ को भी फॉलो किया जा रहा है लेकिन हकूमत के गैर जरूरी बारी बरकम जर्मानों और आए दिन रेस्टोरेंट को सील करने की वजह से आज रेस्टोरेंट इंडस्ट्री जो है वो सरापा एहतजाज है अथॉरिटीज हैव इम्पोज स्मार्ट लॉकडाउन इन वेरियस पार्ट ऑफ सिंध प्रोविंस ऑफ विच कराची इज दैपिटल while the Punjab province has also extended smart lockdown in virus hotspots amid an alarming rise in COVID-19 cases. Pakistan, as of Thursday, reported 429,280 confirmed cases of COVID-19, with over 8,600 deaths so far. Moving on. The NATO has urged the parties to the peace process in Afghanistan to negotiate towards a permanent and comprehensive ceasefire and a political roadmap while welcoming the recent breakthrough in efforts to kickstart direct peace talks. Despite the efforts for peace, violence continues unabated in Afghanistan. The NATO on Wednesday urged the parties to the peace process in Afghanistan to negotiate towards a permanent and comprehensive ceasefire and a political roadmap, while welcoming recent breakthrough in efforts to kickstart direct peace talks. In a statement, the NATO said the recent agreement between the negotiating team of the Afghan government and the Taliban on the rules and procedures for peace negotiations is an important step. But violence, specially driven by Taliban attacks, continues to undermine the peace process and must end, the NATO said. The Afghan government and the Taliban have held three consecutive meetings this week in Doha at the working group level to discuss the agenda of the peace negotiations. Despite the peace efforts, violence continues unabated. 
On Thursday, Malalai Maiwant, a female TV journalist, and her driver were killed in an attack by gunmen on their vehicle in Nangarhar province. No group had claimed responsibility for the attack till the last reports came in. Afghanistan is in the 49th week of the coronavirus pandemic and the Ministry of Public Health has raised alarms over the 46% increase of COVID-19 deaths this week compared to the previous week. According to the ministry, each day deaths have increased from 5 to 10 to 10 to 20 and the total number of patients infected with the disease stands at 48,363. Afghanistan's Ministry of Public Health has raised alarms over the 46% increase of COVID-19 deaths this week compared to the previous week. The ministry said that 1,678 people tested positive for the coronavirus in Afghanistan last week, which is higher than in previous weeks, and each day deaths have increased from 5 to 10 to 10 to 20. The numbers provided by the ministry are usually seen as incomplete due to lack of testing capacity or people's lack of interest to be tested for the virus. Meanwhile, health officials said that 40% of Afghans will get the COVID vaccine within the next two years and that the World Bank and other international organizations will provide the vaccine to Afghanistan. President Ashraf Ghani earlier said that the World Bank has pledged to provide 100 million US dollars to Afghanistan to help the country in the delivery of COVID-19 vaccine for the citizens. Moving on to news from Sri Lanka. Sri Lankan President Gotabaya Rajpaksa urged the education authorities to not let the COVID-19 hinder implementation of plans for the advancement of education from preschool to university level at a meeting at the Presidential Secretariat on Wednesday. All schools resumed academic activities for the remainder of the year on 23rd of November. However, schools in some districts including Kandy and Ampara were forced to close and delay academic activities due to the surging virus cases. Meanwhile, authorities have urged people to limit shopping during upcoming Christmas festival to curb the virus spread. The island nation as of Thursday reported 29,300 COVID-19 cases and 142 deaths. Around 25 young female artists took part in an art exhibition in Srinagar city which was organized to empower the women in India, Chamu and Kashmir and give them a platform to display their skills. The participants showcased their artwork including paper mache, eclectic paintings and calligraphy. In a bid to empower women folk in India's Jammu and Kashmir, an art exhibition was organized this week in the Union Territory Srinagar city. Around 25 young female artists participated in the event and displayed their artwork, including paper mache, sketchwork, eclectic paintings and calligraphy. The Sail Come Art Exhibition organized by Jammu and Kashmir Tourist Development Corporation near the Jhelum River aimed to give a platform to young female artists to showcase their skills and interact with art lovers. And my candles are homemade candles. So I think it's a good platform. Then people can display their talent somewhere. There are such things that we don't have to do with natural beauty. We don't have to do with art lovers. We don't have to do with natural beauty. We don't have to do with art lovers. We don't have to do with music lovers. We don't have to do with heritage lovers. और ऐसे जो यूथ है उनको ऐसी अपॉर्चुनिटीज मिलनी चाहिए क्योंकि यहाँ बहुत कम होती है ऐसे एक्सिबिशंस ऐसे इवेंट्स। The organizers said they got a great response from the youngsters in the region. The initiative aimed to unearth, rediscover, and revive the immense art talent among the women in Jammu and Kashmir. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash AsiaNewsline and follow us on Twitter at AsiaNewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night.
subscribe tag tv youtube channel and press the notification button subscribe tag tv youtube channel and press the notification button